Yo, what up, what up everyone? Uh, I just saw a note, it came out kind of late, but I was surprised at how many changes there were. I quickly skimmed over through and I think these could be very big game changers for a lot of content, so I'm gonna cover them real quickly. So to start off, of course, there are two new events. Uh, first of all, there is a coupon code where you can get uh, several items, so just rainbow mons for 5 and 4 star. 300 Essence of Magic, this is pretty big actually, this takes quite a lot of rounds, uh, and 150 Breath of Lives, and you can get it by using this code. Quickly jumping over to the second event, uh, is the Guest the Silhouette event, and now we got a Guest the Devilmon. I haven't looked into which one of these, but the choices uh, are either 4 star or 5 star, I'm not sure if everyone... Ah, I see, well, you'll have to look it up. Uh, maybe someone will leave it in the comments if they have already figured out uh, as I haven't looked into this much but make sure to do it as well as uh, the effect or rather the rewards you get are pretty decent 300,000 gold as well as uh, a brilliant effect stone box which can drop a purple tier item so make sure to do this event and now for the big juicy stuff uh, I mean, you can see how much content there is by the scroll bar alone. Uh, yeah, so it's the update notice that's dropping tomorrow and goes more in depth about uh, the content that's coming as well as so I saw there was some balance changes which I haven't read yet. So uh, we'll see my first reaction as well. Okay, so key update, of course, guild raid. Uh, we'll be seeing what's new here. So it's guild co-op content that up to 24 players can play per level. Guild raid is seasonal content with a new season every week. Uh, every week, okay. Uh, a new guild raid season will take place after the tallying period at the end of the season and the break. Uh, guild raid can only be participated by guild members that join the guild before the start of the season. Okay, so it looks like the season season is every week. Uh, if you join the guild midweek, you will not be, be able to participate that week, but you will be able to join uh, for the next one. Uh, guild raid can be entered via the guild lobby. You can proceed to the next level once you clear the level. Levels cleared will be maintained in the new season. Okay, so just uh, sort of like dungeons, you unlock it once and then you can enter whichever level uh, you prefer. Each level of guild raid can be entered twice, there is an individu individual time limit when you enter, you must start from level 1 when participating for the first time, but from the next season you can choose and enter any level you cleared in the previous season. Our parties will be created in guild raid based on the order of entry, each party can have up to 12 members, clear the world's contribution. contribution awards, yeah we read this, and of course you can get the 5 star light heart magician. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil her skills much since she is coming to our server tomorrow, so you'll see it uh, there. I've read her skills before, she didn't seem too amazing, but definitely not bad either, so perhaps you will like her. Uh, I don't think I will build mine, but we'll see what happens. Uh, okay, so the Galagos Ruins will be added, uh, unlocked upon clearing quest area. See, I'm not not sure which part of the story this is as I tried looking over it, but seeing as it's Florence continent, is Florence is the fourth continent of course, uh, it shouldn't be too hard to unlock. You can enter via Galagos Ruins from the main menu, uh, you must select at least 10 monsters for the team that match the entry requirements to proceed. Monsters that are locked and cannot be changed until the end of the season, so yeah, you will have to choose up to 30 monsters I believe. It looks like 10 is the minimum amount, but I think it was up to 30 max, and whatever you choose, you will have to use it for the remainder of the season, so make sure to do uh, smart picks there, and build additional units uh, if needed. I know I will be building like 10 or 15 additional net fours just for that, so definitely don't go uh, in with a low amount of units. You can play each stage to reach the boss stage of the floor, you can defeat the boss to proceed with the next floor. Monsters, monsters use up energy when they're used on each stage of Galgas Ruins, monsters that reach zero energy cannot be used. So yeah, uh, make sure to not... I heard some tips that you shouldn't use uh, your OP units on easy stages, 
since then you use up the energy and you're left uh, beating hard stages with uh, pretty crappy monsters so make sure to uh, you can do like the first stages probably with uh, even not a full team equipped maybe like one or two monsters some you might able be able to do it with no monsters at all so yeah and uh, what is this magic order let's just quickly see what's happening oh i think this is the buffs that you get uh, each season right so increases summoner damage with fire element looks like there will be a main fire or rather an element uh, which will contribute uh, a lot of bonuses uh, increases fire monster damage okay uh, increases water creatures defense creatures is i'm assuming the enemy so uh, it looks like enemies get some sort of a buff as well, so you will have to play around it. Uh, team plays at least three water. Of course, these are only placeholders. I'm just uh, checking what sort of requirements are needed uh, for the dungeon itself. There's at least three. I'm guessing these are the requirements for uh, what's it called? The magic order to work, maybe? hard to say actually but yeah uh, magic order can be used to check the buff conditions applied to galagos ruins uh, trace of research obtained by progressing galagos ruins can be checked via research status uh, a galagos ruin season will last two weeks okay two weeks i thought it would be longer like a month or two months uh, previous season info will be set when the season ends uh, galagos ruins is seasonal content the difficult won't be changed but buffs and debuffs will change every season so yeah you will definitely have a chance to sort of learn how to do this dungeon and the only thing that will change is mostly your uh, team composition since uh, a lot of new units will get buffs a lot of new units will get nerfs perhaps any new units will get different buffs which could prevent the previously used units from working so you will have to play around that a bit ancient galagos coins gold and the fine stones can be obtained upon playing galagos ruins oh i saw that the items you can get are uh, one devil mon per rotation so that means one devil mon every two weeks it seems uh you can get some uh i believe it was one of those enhancement items for runes uh, effect stones or whatever they're called so you can get those uh as well as the main reward here will be a special uh sort of i forgot the exact name but there will be a sort of item called some sort of a stone uh, which you can use to their all uh, all stats of your all substats rather of your uh, weapon or equipment uh, yeah I, I think it's oh it actually says it right here equipment refinement uh, equipment support can be changed with the new uh, equipment refinement system yeah there you go the fine stone so to save the reading uh, basically when you use a fine stone on your equipment you will there all different uh, substats on it uh, the grade of the substats don't change so the ones you see on the left side where like you go from rank d to rank s uh, those will not change so for example if you have four b or let's say three b's and one c uh, you will they're all different substats but uh, the grade of those will remain three b's and one c so it is super useful for items that you have already maxed out and simply did not get good substats on so uh, stay tuned for that and definitely don't sell them okay and the appearance change the summoner appearance can be changed in the closet uh, this is pretty self-explanatory just being able to change how you look the monster like heart magician awaken nimcilia i will be skipping this part as the monster will be coming out tomorrow you can quickly glance over her skills here but i think we'll be able to better see her in gameplay eventually uh test modifications uh okay so the martial cats are getting a love sweet vampire um interesting i guess i don't think martial cats are used much apart from the wind one like the wind one is insane but the rest of them i'm not quite sure and the vampire uh, vampires are definitely used i know the wind one is insanely op in pve uh, the fire one does have potential and i do have the fire one so i'll most likely build him for a showcase eventually i'm not sure about the lds but yeah the vampire will definitely be sort of a very commonly used unit and oh balancing this is important okay 
So Kina, wait, is it only Kina? Interesting, a big wave. Uh, is big wave the third skill? No, wait, uh, no, I think big wave, apply attack speed, I think that was the second skill, right? If I'm not wrong, although it's hard to say. Okay, so from attack speed, uh, it applies shield. Stardust uh, decreases the summoner's HP when a team member is revived, uh, increases the cooldown of target when the team... Uh, things, oh, the revive is on her dark element, right? So I'm guessing this is the dark element third skill? Uh, but yeah, increases the cooldown of Stardust, yeah, so that was removed, and recovers the HP of nearby allies, excluding the summoner when a team member is revived. So it looks like a sort of a buff to her third skill, right? Dark boost, so I'm guessing this is the dark uh, element ultimate. Uh, decreases the summoner's HP when a team member is revived. Oh, so she no longer decreases her HP, so I'm assuming this is a buff to Kina as well. Uh, earnest prayer, uh, after attacking with a skill, increase mana by 1 with a 30% chance instead of 20. That's a nice change. And acceleration magic, increases mana regen speed when its HP is below 30% to 50%. Um, yeah, I suppose it will allow her, these two should allow her to cycle her uh, solar units a little bit more. Ooh, and the monster changes, this is the juicy part. Uh, I'm gonna skip the popular one, so Mummy Pixie, I don't think too many use her. Uh, Garuda Light, Light of the Covery, uh, the vibe one with 45%. Wow! Oh wow, the vibes are getting gutted. Three times less HP, and it looks like the same for. Okay, so the virus are getting a huge nerf. So, if you've built the light one, I mean, Garuda Light is still better than uh, the water one, in my opinion, in most cases, but yeah, it looks like the rest of the virus are getting completely screwed. Borderline unusable, maybe, uh, apart from uh, the viving in sort of a peaceful conditions where you like, and I know some people in battlefield like to run away uh, from the fight, uh, quickly revive all their units, heal them up, and then uh, switch back to the normal team, so that that sort of uh, still remains an option, but in fight it looks like the virus will be sort of useless by now. Okay, uh, Beast Monk Fire, ooh this one is a free one okay meditate so that's his heal i think going by one mana cost down take a fire apply silence with a 100 percent chance to burn enemies Ooh. oh wait does his skill burn let me actually check that okay yeah so the fire meditate uh is going down to three mana cost but it's a single uh target cleanse as well as heal so i don't think it will be too impactful still and the silence looks like it was 90% before, but I'm assuming this is an additional added condition which bumps it up to 100 if he does have burn, so not much of a change, just a 10% uh, increase if he does, if the enemies do have burn effect, so I suppose that's a decent change. And for the ultimate, uh, the same effect, but it cannot be resisted. Uh, the 1-1 one, one Meditate also going to 3, but it's a single target heal again, so I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, chain skill cooldown, Thunder of Energy, let me see which skill that, that's the... Wait, what? Oh, that's his passive, okay. And it's going down from 7 to 5, but it already had uh, the availability to keep the buffs permanently, so... Not a big change, and the defense buff is going from level 1 to level 2, also in my opinion not a big change. I mean he will be able to stack a lot more defense and heals, but I don't think this will change uh, the way you use him much, since he's a single target attacker sort of. It should help him with the uh, provoke he has on this third skill, so he might see some use if you have him, and sort of help him out with the overall sustain. Uh, from the provoked enemies, but other than that, I don't think he will be too amazing yet. I think he will need some sort of a help in not just buffing the skills, but just having uh, enemies that could y use those skills on, I suppose. It's hard to say what I mean, but yeah, my thoughts are not gonna be relevant still. 
Uh, light one, meditate. Uh, this one is not getting a mana cost decrease, it seems. Uh, it covers the HP of an ally based on. Yeah, so ba buffing the max HP percentage, but a tiny bit, that's like what, 2.7%. Apply level one skill acceleration to himself. Okay. And ultimate the same thing to himself. Okay, so no matter which skill you use, uh, you get skill acceleration. Um. I mean, skill acceleration mostly helps if you are in a soling slot, so I suppose it's a decent there, but it will not impact much. Oh, that's probably the reason why they're not changing mana cost since uh, they expect us to use him in a non soling slot. So I'm not sure how to feel about this change. I suppose it will let him cycle skills more. Okay, so Valky the Water. Uh, the move harmful effect and apply level 1 continuous recovery. That's not a summoner on itself. It's gonna be annoying, but I don't think this helps her alone. Uh, first aid decreases crit damage taken by the summoner by 50% to 30%. Wait, is that wait is that a straight up nerf to her? Because I swear I haven't seen Water Valkyrie being used like at all. Alright, let me let me see her skills real quickly. So uh first aid is the passive, right? And level four decreases crit damage taken by 50% um, So am I seeing this right? She's basically getting Well, her night arrival is getting a buff, but her passive is getting a nerf Or am I reading this wrong? I'm not getting Decreases crit damage taken by the summoner by 50% to 30% Yes, yeah, so it looks like it's a nerf. I don't know why because she doesn't seem too strong in my opinion but I guess uh, alternate night remove her harmful effect and apply level 1 continuous recovery so yeah she she looks to be becoming sort of like aerial uh, where her third skill does remove two harmful effects and gives level 2 continuous recovery and on top of that it removes a harmful effect and apply continuous uh, that's not a summoner itself so yeah uh, sort of getting an AoE part of the skill as well but uh, I don't think she will be still amazing I think Ariel is just a little bit better than her okay ooh the fire one this is big uh, oh so trade up just nerfing the revives yeah it looks like they're cutting the revive HP by like two thirds so from 55 to 19 percent damn that is a huge change actually I don't think this will or rather, I think this will actually change the Devire Mapa completely. I don't think they will be usable in PvP anymore. At least the Arena and Battlefield. Not the Battlefield, Arena and... Uh, what's the other called? The Challenge Arena, Live Arena. Magic Knight Light. Uh, I'm gonna skip this one. You can read on, but I mean, it's a Light Nat 5, so not many people have them. I will skip those units unless they are fully obtainable. So yeah, if a dog is getting a change, uh, Wind Beetle Knight, electrocuting shit in, so cooldown from 10 to 5 seconds, apply level 1 electric shock to the enemy target. Wait, are, these, are they nerfing? I don't know. I mean, technically, when you uh, combine these two, it's technically not a nerf, but adding that 60% chance... Mm. I'm not a big fan of this, I know. I would prefer having debuffs even if they were applied rarely uh, at 100% rather than 60 since that allows you to miss a lot of debuffs on a target for example and then just mess up the combo completely since it's kind of reliant on the passive plus I think it was the secondary still skill combo so yeah, not a big fan of this Oh, at least he gets some da defense scaling on this, I suppose. Okay, uh, Fire Chimera applies level 1 damage dealt up to itself. Okay, uh, Mermaid Water applies shield equal to... Okay, so a little bit of a buff to the shield amount. Reduce the duration of the harmful effect by 5%. Interesting, interesting. Not a cleanse, but close to it. Uh, the Dark One will skip... Uh, Water Vampire, ooh, attack up to 4 enemies within the area, attack up to 8 enemies. Apply level 2 Frostbite to the enemy target. Doesn't he already have Frostbite on some of his skills? Since that could be... 
there could be a change in the right direction I suppose and could make him viable for seal okay so he did have a force by level one so I'm guessing this will be another it says added I think it should be changed right unless they're adding level two on top of that so a bit hard to say by the description here uh, dark one we will skip uh, water archangel another buff wow Apply level 1 continuous effect to the ally target that remove the harmful effects. Fair enough, so sort of more similar to the uh, Sky Arena version of the unit, where you only get the healing if you uh, do cleanse an effect. Uh, the one one Archangel Bethling, apply level 1 defense up to the ally target, okay, so that's his heal. Uh, and his revive is changing from, also oh, the nerf nerfing the revive. Uh, apply soul protection oh wow straight up just nerfing the device skills okay apply soul protection to itself yeah so just making him a little bit closer to the sky arena version as well and ultimate th same thing just uh nerfing the device a lot uh fire cool girl uh so her third skill is getting a mana cost decrease and chance to burn applied uh potentially making her sort of decent for seal now and just overall improving the third skill uh, burn effect, so that's pretty nice. Uh, Lucian, amputation magic, deal defense, penetrating damage if target is stunned, under CC effect, so that covers a lot more effects, so even stuff like provokes or pushbacks, uh, this should help with the overall damage in PvP. Uh, Water Undyne, also nerfing the vibe and soul protection, similar Thing. Okay, Wind Raven, basic attack, root the enemy target per hit with a 6% chance. Really doesn't do anything. Uh, zero shift, mana cost from 4 to 3. Uh, 1000 attack. Okay, so lowering the mana cost and damage only by a little. So, evasion up, I don't think that was too important, but it looks like the damage if you are using him in a soling slot will increase quite a bit. And it looks like the same thing for the light one. I'm assuming since the mana is dropping, uh, the skill multiplier will remain the same. So potentially you're looking at the wind and light ribbons getting a lot more damage if you use them uh, as damage dealers with skills. Yeah, dark one, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna read all of this, especially since I'm not too sure what he does right now. And Light Pioneer also looks like just nerfing the revives and stuff like that. Okay, moving forward. Uh, summon Altar added a button for checking the detailed info of the summoner with increased summon rates. Own summon mileage can be checked when you don't own a scroll. Uh, what does that mean? Added a button for checking the detailed info? Oh, oh, okay, okay, so I'm assuming this is about those uh, banners and stuff where you can just see a monster skills, I suppose, before even summoning, because before you could only check the icon of him. Uh, own summon mileage can be checked even when you don't own the scroll, okay. A party dungeon, ooh, hello, I'm listening. Uh, the opening schedule of party rupture has been modified. No, what what is this? Wait, 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 I'm not prepared for this. Okay. Sunken ruins open on Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. The store in Skylight on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. So they're looking to close uh each dungeon for three days each week. Um okay. Party Dungeon Rupture devouts have been improved due to the change in schedule. The same unlock conditions will be applied to Sunken Ruins. Okay, uh, the amount of times you need to enter is getting decreased for the quest, so if you haven't done those yet, uh, this will be a welcome change. Ruin Temple coins will be added to Party Dungeon Seal Devouts. Wait, what on earth are Ruin Temple coins? Oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. So similar coins to the, uh, yeah, the other elite dungeons. Uh, seal coin exchange shop will be added where uh, ruined temple coins can be exchanged for various items. Oh, I'm excited to see uh, that tomorrow and I'll make sure to 
when we're looking at the update uh, live, I'll make sure to check up on this point. Change some boss animations in Raid Elite Foggy. Uh, Raid Boiling Waterfall Naraka's attack pattern has been partially changed. Improve the map terrain to enable smooth gameplay in Twisted Marsh. And support the rewards have been increased. About time. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, my prediction was that they would add this, uh, these uh, crafting materials to the coin shop, but having them as support awards is sort of the same thing since you do get coins here. Okay, uh, Twisted Marsh, instead of 10 coins you get 5 star vampire, despair rune and crafting materials, beautiful. Uh, okay, Arena, uh, Arena rank design will be changed, Arena rank promotion, the motion animations will change. Uh, so just decorative effects, the active effect will be changed after a certain time in the read. Okay, so from damage dealt increased by 40%, uh, going to HP the cover did decrease by 10%. Wait. Wait, is this a typo? Because we do have HP here as well. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure. There's definitely a typo here, I think, as I think two of them should be damage. Yeah, uh, I'm assuming this is a typo since I don't think that will have two of the same effects in the new one, so just a simple mistake, I suppose. The viral cooldown will be applied to targets survived by soul protection or the viral effects in the arena. And they cannot be revived during the revival cooldown. Yes, I welcome this change since uh, the revivers are extremely annoying and I personally have a grudge against them. I refuse to build him and I love this change. <laughs> okay, monster movement speed will be increased in the arena. Yes, 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 yes. This is very good since right now uh, summoners can easily just outrun everyone and monsters will have no chance to catch up ever. Two ascensions are uh, currently floor info will be shown in the ascension. Okay, before reading this, come to us, please add the option to stop the run after 10 entries so we could clear the secret room. Uh, I'm tired of trying to check it manually and skipping one or two floors, please. Okay, current floor info will be shown in the two ascensions. Uh, you will be moved to the next floor without loading if you select to proceed to the next floor in the 12th ascension battle result screen or if you're in the repeat battle. Yep, pretty, 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 pretty decent change because previously you did have to go into the uh, what's it called the 12th ascension uh, room lobby if you will click the next stage. Uh, you will be moved to the next floor without loading if you select to proceed to the next floor in the spires. Oh, so the same thing just in spires. And the same thing in Attribute Towers, okay. Uh, Spires of Ascension Challenge status can now be checked. Ooh, okay. Uh, Spires of Ascension Challenge level will be shown in the results screen. Cool, cool, cool. And unfortunately, it looks like there will be no change of stopping after 10 floors. Okay, uh, Hero Area, the time remaining until the boss and elite creatures appear in the Hero Area will be shown. Oh, that's a decent change. Uh, you will be moved inside the hero area portal when moving in to a hero area through the map. Uh, so just faster traveling, I suppose. Uh, the contribution the work for hero area buffament can now be obtained by slightly more users. Uh, normal creature hunting quests will be displayed before a lead creature hunt test. And uh, sort of quality of life change. Uh, they're trying to fix hero area, but the main problem is the spawn timers of them. If you're gonna spawn them, uh, I'm not even talking about myself, but for uh, the American players, uh, I know some of the boss spawn times are like 3 a.m. I'm not sure how they expect anyone to uh, enter during those times, especially for normal people who just work regular 9 to 5 jobs. So they're trying to fix it, but they're not addressing the main concern here. Okay, uh, Battlefield, you can check the info of other users in the status and result screen in Battlefield. Uh, party availability will be changed for various Battlefield times. Um, okay, so... Oh, okay, I see, I see. So it looks like uh, parties can no longer enter during the first and third phases. 
Mm, so, oh, I'm not sure how I feel about it because it won't change much if you are playing solo, but if you are playing with your guilds and your parties, uh, it sort of screws EU players a lot since the first time you can enter with a party is uh, at 3 p.m. PST and that's usually like midnight for close to midnight I think for EU players so mm, I'm not sure about this I am not sure about this I suppose this is an attempt to uh, balance out the mode since uh, if you do enter in a party you do have quite a bit of an advantage just based on the planning that you can do with other team members so for solo players this is a good change uh, for party players not so much but I suppose the amount of sky stones will be adjusting for the winning teams in the awards in the battlefield not saying how much but that's interesting uh, some of the past complete profession crafting daily challenge will be deleted oh, I like that one uh, the requirement for a clear rupture daily challenge will change from 2 to 1 time oh yeah it makes sense since uh, they're closing one of them uh, during the day the requirement for a clear rupture weekly challenge from the end to 5 yep uh, enhanced rune and level mob monster challenges will be combined into daily and weekly challenges upon unlocking summary transcendence what? okay end of trial ascension challenge will not be shown yes thank you this is super annoying like it's it's not hard but it's just annoying to do it all over again some summoner pass points and challenge completion awards will be changed according to the number i'm not gonna go too much into details but it just looks like it's easier to uh, get the summoner pass points uh challenge completion the board uh so from better fly from 5 to 50 beautiful uh and now no wait Oh, 5 and 50 to 50k. Okay, so. Oh. Oh, okay, so the gold is getting nerfed by 10,000. And uh, Breath of Lives are getting pumped by. No, wait, are they. No, 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 I'm reading this wrong. So Breath of Lives are getting like two times. Uh... Is it two times? No, but wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, this is hard to call here. No, it, it will be... Previously it was uh, 85, now it's 100. So 15 extra Breath of Lives per week. And gold was 10k per day, 25k. So from 95k to 105k. So, okay, so 15 extra Breath of Lives and 10k extra gold per week. Nice. Uh, summoner, when you successfully transcend your summoner for the first time, other summoners can be transcended to the same level for free. Wait, that's insane. Couldn't used for summoner transcendals will be the turn excluding the summoner with the highest transcendal levels. Okay, so you're not losing anything much, but wow, wow. So you unlock one summoner to level seventy and. You can already use all of them to level set. That is actually huge. That saves a lot of resources. That saves a lot of gold, especially. And it'll actually change the the meta of uh, using your tickets, I think. So, like, stuff like Path of Growth will become way, way less popular, especially the Path of Training and the Subjugation. Oh, that will be interesting to see later on, actually. Uh, exchange center you can use the hills to purchase gold at the exchange center uh, gold cannot be traded between summoners in the exchange center okay so just the regular npc trade some sort of uh, other mm, this looks like sort of miscellaneous changes so i won't go too much into deal on it okay the hill kingdoms with week uh login events what on earth are these chocolate boxes is this an event? Um, okay, so it lasts for two weeks and we're getting several different types of chocolates. It looks like three different chocolate types. And uh, can we see the rewards of it? We gather gift materials, okay. And uh, 
the, the words are not shown, so I suppose if they are not showing the words, they will not be good. Uh, that's pretty much the case for a lot of these events. Because if you did get a 5 star monster of some sort, they will definitely make sure to advertise it very much here. Okay, uh, this is sort of those uh, completing the dungeon events, or rather achievement events, so they will most likely be permanent and you will get some crafting materials from it. I'm expecting the works to be similar to what the uh, it was available in Korea and they're really not that special so don't stress uh, on completing this one. Uh, now this is where the events are a little better. Uh, you do get quite a bit of scrolls. I know there's a Devilmon here and a Devilmon at the very end I believe. Uh, I don't quite remember the exact amount of scrolls you get from the Galagos Ruins achievement but yeah, so far they're looking pretty decent here. Uh, and Lucky Bingo, of course, our beloved Lucky Bingo that no one likes. So it will last for a week, just sort of a filler event. Really, don't don't stress this one. The previous one had horrible rates of like five crystals per ticket. So you definitely, probably, most won't likely won't be able to farm these crystals too much here. And lots of fixed issues. Jesus Christ, how many issues did you have? Oh my god. Wow, it looked like a day one patch. Damn. Additional uh, events ending, packets ending, uh, special offer. Sure, I suppose these are just some random new packs coming in. And yeah, wow, what an update. We'll be quite excited to see what uh, happens with the new content tomorrow. I'll make sure to record a video of my first thoughts on it. Maybe even a spicy live stream if I do find the time. I uh, will see about that. And yeah, hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one.